Hello and welcome to Bump Love. This week in commemoration of Independence Day, we have the dads who are going to be talking to us about preparing your children to be independent. Uh, part of parenting is doing this preparation for your children and hoping that you have done enough to prepare them for the real world. And on the show, we have a loaded panel of fathers <laughs> with very huge CVs, so I'm going to try and summarize them. <laughs> Um, at the very end, I have Joseph Beyanga. Joseph is uh, head of programming, radio programming at Nation Media. He's married and he's a father of two beautiful daughters. That would be him, that one over there. Um, next to him is a gentleman called Ben Wiener, who is known personally to me. <coughs> personally, personally. Unfortunately, Ben Wiener, right? Yes. Ben Wiener, Ben Wiener, who is a um, media expert, he's a fixer, he's a dreamer, entrepreneur, car buff, very many things. And a oh, host and on KFM. Yeah? yeah? And a host on KFM. And a host on KFM, KFM. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Liverpool fan. Um, next to him is uh, Simon Kaheru. Simon Kaheru's CV is also quite loaded. Yeah. Um, he's an enthusiastic Ugandan. You've probably had him on KFM. Um, sometimes guest described as a professional communicator. I'm wondering what the sometimes is. Sometimes. Called. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, on an ordinary day, he's public affairs and communications director at Coca-Cola Beverages. I feel like giving you like a small kalango that you have introduced bye bye. a new... A new drink. Bushera, I love Bushera. Uh, right? Nutrition, Bushera. <laughs> nutrition at its best. You know? We support our farmers. Uh -huh. and, and, and many other things. Fermented with a fermentation. <laughs> 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 no, but also, but also something I've forgotten. Yeah. This guy was big. But when, he wake, was. when he wakes up and is determined, he's such yes. a great guy. Yes. On top of that, I have never eaten anywhere better cassava than his place. Yesterday I was having yamachoma with him. Really? Man, yes. <laughs> Barbecue, he loves and, it, man. And we snatched him from a branch today, so yes. yeah, maybe one day he'll host us. Um, <laughs> and then Emos Wekesa, who is also not um, new to you. Uh, Emos Masaba Wekesa is a businessman, he's an entrepreneur, he's a corporate executive in Uganda, founder, proprietor and managing director of Great Lakes Safaris Limited, who sponsored our momcation. If you Yay. haven't watched those episodes, Yay. please, we are leaving the link. <laughs> <laughs> He's married, he has three. Those are not things you are interested in. Yeah, um, welcome gentlemen to the show. Thank you. So we want to talk about preparing your children to be independent or to leave the, the comfort of your home and what we are calling the nest. Um, but we want to start from your own experiences. What was it like for you guys leaving your homes? Were you kicked out? Did you leave when you turned 18? And what was the experience like um, in the real world for you? When I finished, uh, when I joined campus, uh, that was uh, on uh, 26th of September, 1996. Wow. That was the last time I was in my father's house as a kid. When I left with my luggage, you I never, never went, went back with my luggage. That's nice. <laughs> My son. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you promised him or you threatened him with it? I, <laughs> I told him I'm preparing him. Uh -huh. that's it sounds like a that, threat. You know, but you see, that's a promise. Preparing yeah. him. I'm preparing you for the the bad. good time ahead. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like others, these who say, I'm kicking you out at 18. Uh -uh. Yeah. After 18, please make your own money. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, so I was never kicked out, but when I left, as I packed my stuff and I was leaving, I remember telling my mom, I've okay. gone to be a man. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I've told a lot of stuff to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's how I left. Okay. I, I was kicked out. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. I started working. Um, when Wait, I was on you campus. were working? You mm. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. Joseph knows. Um, I started working when I was in my second year uh, at the university, so I'd always been working. And so because I was um, a non resident, yeah. So I was working but living at home. And so it becomes a little bit comfortable. And so you support yourself, you're buying, you know, the latest phones. Uh, there was a, a disc man called the I River, which was very fancy. <laughs> um, bought a car from Joseph, actually, called Fiona. <laughs> when you were on campus? After, yeah. Right after campus. Yeah, so, yeah mm. it was an FX, a wonderful <laughs> FX, before I became a Land Rover guy. Um, and then somewhere along the way, my mom woke up one day and said, but I have just realized that you don't seem to be doing things that are preparing you to be a proper man. Mm. So I am giving you a week. Get out. Get, Get out. out of my house. I, I don't want you here. So we looked around. She actually helped me, said, here, 
this should be able to at least cover your moving costs. So, and she was right, because when she said that, I realized that I had not prepared myself to be in my own place. And so mm. when I moved into uh, that apartment in, in Chitintali at the time, the only thing I had was a mattress and a letter. <laughs> But, you but then you had mobile eggs. phones, a car. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I know. <laughs> Which just vindicates my mom's decision. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> she, I, 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 I love your mom. <laughs> because she understood it properly. Yeah. This guy seems to have more money yeah. than, than he, he understands he, is necessary. Absolutely. Mm. Let me push him out so that you stop subsidizing. She stopped subsidizing your rent, yeah. electricity, electricity, water, food. Water, food. Yeah, the imagine. biggest asset he had was an ability. All yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> All that he has mentioned so far. Yeah, but my, my, mine is close to Joseph's story. I left um, home. Mine was 1993 when I went to Makere. Mm. And I didn't really go back. I only went back when I was very, very sick. Initially, I'd go every Sunday because we had a tradition. Mm. Then that ended because, you know, late teen life, things change. Mm. Sunday involves less being awake than yeah. other things. <laughs> so eventually, I started going home only when I was very, very sick. Yeah. Mm. And then at the end of the first term, I discovered that thing called MUFA, Mufa. Makere University Flukas Association. Yeah. Oh. And I was, uh, I was already a, a senior, no, that time I was a mid-level officer in North Court, the North Court mm. State Supreme Revolutionary Command Council. And so I had to keep commanding operations. <laughs> I couldn't come back to Uganda. That's a nonsense. You <laughs> <laughs> but, but <laughs> it, but that's <laughs> it's true. We took it very seriously. During MUFA, I was one of the commanders in control of the university. Wow. We'd open halls of residence for students to go in and sleep, protect them from wardens. It was all a thing. But eventually, I, didn't, I just didn't go back home. Mm -hmm. I, I went at the end of third year for a couple of weeks, found a Muzigo in Bugolobi, mm -hmm. moved in there, and that was it. I've stayed in that general neighborhood yeah, till now. Up to now up to <laughs> of course, for graduation, I'd go back. But one of the key things before Amos comes in mm -hmm. is it's different for boys, for boys than it girls. is for girls. Yes. My parents had no objection. They said, okay, you found a place. How are you going to do it? Mm. What do you need? I said, well, <laughs> all I need is um, my mattress and uh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. The, okay. the first place we stayed where there were apartments, uh, like was like student hostel, you know, fresh graduate hostel. Right now there's a Akamwes shopping mall in uh. Chevando. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Your work. <laughs> <laughs> He has a story with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amos, what was your story? Uh, me, I had two stages of being kicked out. The first stage, uh, to be honest, poverty kicked me out of my oh, first home. You know, I, okay. I, as a kid, I left home as a very young, young kid because my parents could not afford looking after me. So I was taken to Salvation Army in uh, 1983. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, just before I was, 20, before I was 10. Then I went to Salvation Army Children's Home, uh, went through school, uh, but it was automatic. When you finished school, you didn't have to say anything, anything about <laughs> going back. <laughs> You're on your own, <laughs> you know, that, that's how it was for me. Mm. Not, not, nothing very eventful. Okay. Yeah. So um, Simon talked about uh, preparing your children to leave home being different for girls and for Very, for very, boys. very different. Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you, I tell the boys, hmm. uh, me, it's not only my son, the one at home. But I keep telling the boys, age 18, you are out. out. Okay. For the girls, to this day, and I was having a conversation with Amos yesterday about mm. this, my daughter, my firstborn child, is supposed to leave home. Okay. She should have left home last year mm -hmm. for university. COVID came, yeah, COVID. <laughs> so she couldn't go. Yeah. Now there's vaccination, mm. countries have opened up. I don't have too many excuses for keeping her at home. So, ah. yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I see you're feeling, you're feeling terrible about that. I was having a discussion with my realize yeah. we have something in common. Uh, I have a, I keep, I keep, when I, when I dream of sending my children to a boarding school, I just shake. I, I feel like as a father, I want to come back every day. If I'm in Kampala, every day my children must see me before yeah. they sleep. Correct. Yeah. So that, that, that attachment, in the morning I must wake up and, you know, see them preparing, they're going to school. As a father, and most times I drop them to school myself. So it is very difficult. And I saw it in Simon. I was like, it's a problem here. And now I'm at a stage where my son, of course, is doing motocross. Yeah. And he has friends across Africa now. And, and now it's, it's not even just African. He was, just, it was German. He has friends. And they're discussing with some friends in South Africa and Kenya. And they're saying, guys, we're going to a boarding school in uh, Port Elizabeth. And say, Dad, I also want to go to a boarding school. I'm looking at this guy and I'm saying, 
But they so, um, yeah, we, yeah, we, what's you, up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what are you doing, apart from the threats of at 18, you need to be out of my house? What practical things are you doing to prepare your kids for that time? Rachel, these guys have scared me. They've scared you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. They've scared me. Uh, so if it wasn't COVID, mm -hmm. our firstborn would be in secondary school. Yeah. And we promised the moment she goes to secondary school, she goes to boarding school. Yes. You promised? Yes. We, we had a conversation, a conversation. Uh, with the mother and we said um, she has to go. Mm. It's the first stage of being Preparation. prepared yeah. to be independent. So, so who did you promise? You promised your daughter or... We promised her. We promised, we promised her also. I was looking forward to We this. told her, yes, at uh, secondary school, S1, you go to boarding school. Mm. Even if the school is next to home. Oh. If we can afford, she was will she go. Was she excited okay. about That's it? She's excited about it. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a story that maybe Joseph needs to tell about, because uh, I, I know his daughters and how... How, what, we, what he's been doing because you've been preparing your girls to be independent even from a very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very young age. He does, yeah. does some really crazy it, it, It's just, I mean, it goes to a simple thing as what time do you wake up? Mm. What do you do when you wake up? Mm. What do we remind you to do? Is there anything we remind you to do? Nothing. So one of these crazy days, I woke up and I said, girl, you are going to Wandegar. She's like, Wandegar? Well, the first one to be freaked out was the mother. We did not discuss. No, I knew the moment we opened a discussion, it would never happen. Yes. So I tell the young girl, tomorrow you are going. So she was freaked out. So when she was freaked out, the mother intervened. I said, okay, Please let's say read. how old she is. For huh? purposes of how old is she? How old is she? Uh, she was 13 when she made the journey. Okay. But she had used the taxi by herself at 8. Oh. We were coming from church, we reached a point said, do you know this town? So whenever we are traveling, whether we are going to Arua or wherever, I tell them, get off your books, get off everything. I need you to tell me we've crossed from one district to another. Oh, wow. wow. Where are we now? How many districts have we crossed? How many rivers? Take the stuff they study from classroom and into real it. life. Yes. And that's why we make it a point to go all over everywhere in Uganda. Mm. Let them understand what they study. So now, when we are coming from church, we go to church at UCF in Makere. Mm -hmm. So we are moving, he said, where are we now? Ntinda, my, my one day girl. I said, okay, we are now in Ntinda. How many more points do we need to stop before we get home? No, from here, it's Nigeria, it's mm. Chira, and then you are home. Mm -hmm. All right, out of the car. Uh, do you know this guy reminds me? God. <laughs> Four years ago, no, five years ago, of course, I'm, I'm a, as a father, you also keep learning, yeah? Mm. So I am hosting a, a billionaire in dollars. Mm. The guys of Johnson Johnson, the guy running it now, yeah. from the airport. He's in short, he has two children, and 11 and 9. Mm -hmm. And this guy, is from the airport, he's just interviewing them about Uganda. Wow. And I was shocked how much they knew about Uganda. Mm. Me, who, is, lives, who in lives here? Mr. Uganda. <laughs> okay, man, of course, I know Uganda. I love Uganda. Yeah. Because you're an exceptional person when it comes to learning about your country, about your country and teaching yeah. other people like yeah thank you but i paid attention and i thought they, they had done well yeah i thought that's the reason why he's a billionaire maybe mm. that's the reason it's different from all of us 11 nine year old girls explaining uganda and talking about tribes and whatever they had read i mean you go ahead i just so we get into she gets into a taxi and you know the mother almost froze but it's okay we are moving give her the money she had understood how to count money how to get the change and all that she gets in a taxi i'm driving behind silently watching every step she gets off gets off from a taxi she knows how to move from get on the border go home so it was almost like a controlled experiment yes you were still there that was a controlled was experiment. A experiment now at 13 i'm like let's go i'm sending it to one girl this time she froze and she's been protected so she hears what her friends her friends never stepped in a taxi had they yeah. ever ride the border Along the way, she had taken a border to her friends' birthday parties. Take a border, we'll pick you from there. So, but this time, she's going on an expedition. From home to Chira to get a taxi by herself. Get a taxi, reach in Tinder, disembark from one taxi, get into another. Uh, when you go, I wanted her to go up to City Square, but we reversed the route. The taxi dropped her, crossed the road, go to a pharmacy, buy for me masks. Uh, yeah, she bought these masks here. Really? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> buy the masks. After the masks get back into a taxi, come back home. When coming back home, she put one over me, smarter than me. 
she had her stuff she wanted to buy. She had, they make, they make some money, they save, they do everything. So she had her money. She had spotted the shop where she wanted to go. So on coming back, she did not take a border back home. She took a walk because the shop is along the way. Went, shopped her stuff, came back home. And when wow. she came back home, she accounted for every coin and she said, Oh, I did not use this much because I took a border. I, I, instead of a border border, I walked back home. I said, No, this is your money. I gave her back the money. And, and the girl, I was, I was, that day, I remember I called Ben, I was excited. <laughs> preparing, preparing children for independence. independence. So, but, yeah. No, but, but if you hate the country though, if you hate the people around you for laziness, for corruption, yeah. you must participate in raising those people, yeah. the next yeah. generation. And that's what you're doing. Now, that the, other, be corrupt. the other crazy thing I do, I'm involved a bit in our community where we stay. A lot, not a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when we are going for meetings, I go with her. I, I'm focusing more on the firstborn because if she knows everything, yeah. this one yeah. will follow. Yeah. Peer pressure. Yeah. Mm. So we go for a meeting. If I'm chairing or whatever, she will take the minutes. Mm. When she comes back home, she types them because we have to saturate them. Very good. Very yes. good. So if at least, here's the interesting thing. Um, we listen to this story and it sounds almost abnormal right especially for for this you know um our age the 40 Almost to 50 class, yes. middle class mm -hmm. but look growing up for us guys this was not abnormal no, no, it was the standard. we left home in the morning in Imbara to go i, I went to a, a school called boma primary school my mom would pack some you know two pieces of cassava or something for you if she had money you'd get 100 shillings to go and buy pancakes on on the way and then you'd walk and you'd cross from Lugazi in Mbara to Boma, which is Ooh. maybe about four kilometers across near the golf course. If, if, if everyone knows Mbara where the golf course is, that's where the school was. And so you'd go, do until lunch, go back home, have a bite, and then trek back. back to school. I remember when the war broke out in 85, we were at school in the morning when the bullet started you know, over the place in Mbara. But the headmaster was not scared. He just called us and said, okay, things are getting a bit sticky. I need you guys to go home, but be oh. careful along the way. When we eventually came to Kampala in 1990, I remember in Nakasero school, Nakasero primary, we were staying in Kawalagala. Um, there are days when, you know, we'd play football and then get carried away and daddy comes to pick you up and you're not there and he's like, what the hell is going on? But eventually he knew, this guy knows where home is. And he will go. So you have, you, you have like-minded people, there are guys who stay in the YC, there are guys who stay in whatever, and you walk. So you walk from Nakasero, down the hill, Ginger Road, Chibuli, Kabalagala and your home. And that was a normal thing for us. Seeing the children in a certain way yeah. so that they are not lazy, yeah. useless, yeah. and all the other words that we sometimes use. <laughs> our parents, <laughs> actually our parents' parents, yeah. raised their children in a certain way. Yeah. Our parents raised us in a certain way. Yeah. How are we raising the next generation? Yeah. When, when we walk into offices and people are not operating in a certain fashion that we expect, yeah. Why would we be surprised? Yeah. If a child gets to the age of 15 and has not yet used a taxi on their own, yeah. mm, how, how do you think that person is going to operate in an office yeah. setting? If they even know where the taxi park is. Exactly. <laughs> if they don't know how to wake up on their own at a certain hour in order to get to work, then... So Simon, what have you done with your kids? That? What he's talking oh, about? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, keep, I keep them active. Yeah. I, I try not to be militant, but yeah, they, they always bit accuse of... me of being militant. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, a lot of what I do is try to give them the experiences that I had as a child. Mm. On top of immersing them into what, what we are, we are I do now. Yeah. You know, like taking them along on different things. But show them what we did as children. And we, we can't do it every day because life has changed. Yeah. But I remember a, a couple of years ago, we went to my parents' home. We go every second Sunday of the month, pre COVID, of course. And uh, my brother, Paul, said, let's go to the well. Mm. So we got jerry cans, you know, different receptacles, walked, they're all the children to the well where we used to go and fetch water from. Yeah. And of course the kids found it funny, interesting. Yes. It's, but then we said, no, guys, you're carrying the water. Yeah. We're going back home with this water. There's no water here. <laughs> now we cleverly switched off the, the, the water supply yeah. at the house. You remember, there's no water here, so we're taking water. So they collected the water. The younger children were like, this, this can't be life. And we said, Bad no, you're life. lucky. You could have been doing this in Kawango. We used to have a well in Hoima yeah. that had leopards. And we'd have oh, to go and fetch water from there. It was called Kawango because mm -hmm. of that Yengo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that experience for them can't happen every day. No. But for them to appreciate that water doesn't come from a tap. 
for everybody. Yes. Makes them understand I need I need to be grateful for this. Appreciate. I need to protect it. I need to do the right thing. Yeah. And there are many other things getting them to dig, getting them to understand that milk does not come from a supermarket. It from comes a from a cow. <laughs> from a supermarket. You know? yeah. All those things must come to them. And then most importantly, making them work. Mm. Yeah. There's no there's no free dinner. We we're, were talking about the brunch just now. Um, I had a, a domestic issue. Muzima Musana Mushukuru, please. I hope you're going to be watching this. Do not forget the conversation. The rule is simple. Nobody eats without, work. without working. Mm. I cook the entire weekend, but they are expected to do certain things yeah. in order to partake of the meal. I hope the men listen. He cooks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, entire the entire weekend. My, so... my wife is suffering. She, just she, she can't get just, into the kitchen. Just because How is that suffering? I think she's living the good life. <laughs> <laughs> she's living the good life. When Come you on. start about cooking, man. Yeah, we are. Joseph cooks too. Mm -hmm. My husband on the other Ooh. hand. I get, can can we not? Okay. Ah. What are you doing? No, 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 no. no. Sorry, Amos. This guy. This guy needs to go cook and show his sons yeah. that men cook. We are men cook. Yeah. When I'm cooking, my daughters are the one, are my assistant. Mm. They are giving me ingredients and all that. Mm. But guess what? Now we can comfortably sleep because they can prepare a whole meal for everybody for in the house. We have, to, we have to show them the way. Yeah. But you are, you are 40 what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, he's probably he's younger than all of us here, yeah. so let's be... Uh, no, we'll be kind. <laughs> we'll be kind. Yeah. No, but I, I think as they speak, I just see so much in common. Mm. Uh, for me, it all started as a kid. I saw how poor my parents were. Mm. I saw how terrible environment I grew up in. And I thought, if I'm to get children, I must get children when I'm first able to look after them. Mm. Two, when I'm able to give them time. Not just being able to provide for them. Providing is just one thing. You can be a father, provide, yeah. anyone can provide. Yeah. But fathering a child is very, very different. Yeah. And I can say I was, I was prepared. I got married just towards the age of 31. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been married now towards 18 years. I'm making 18 years uh, end of this month oh, okay. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, been, it's been a walk. I think I changed diapers of Kylan more than my wife did, I think. Wow. I walked with him as a kid for long. And... and and like Joseph says, I knew for sure that if you work with a firstborn so well, the others just follow. I, I've just seen it, that's for sure. So by the age of four, my son was at the garage. Someone, someone mine, he knows. From the age of four, my son was working at the office, sweeping, cleaning, wheelbarrowing and everything. This morning I was sitting with my uh, um, Shamba guy. We were just having a chat about life with the guy who helps us in the compound. And he told me, my neighbors are shocked. When they see your children, you know, pushing wheelbarrow, doing that, you know, no one cleans after their rooms. Yeah. The old, even the nine-year-old guy, you cannot threaten him and say, I'm leaving him alone at home and he can't cook. He cooks. Now, the firstborn by the age of 11, he knew how to cook, he knew how to mechanic a car, he knew how to ride motocross, he knew how to drive. We, not on the road, but, we you know, we, we chose it. You know, the thing is that for us as Ugandans, we think a child must drive as an adult. No, these Muzungus are ahead of us. Because they started driving on farms with kids that's very early, doing work early. Mm -hmm. For us, you want a guy 40 years before you can <laughs> learn how to driving before you start teaching the person. So for me, it's been he's worked collecting eggs, sometimes done some work for him. My children have been like that. And and, and it's been very useful. And also put them in a, an area of competition, sports. Yeah. You know, all of them do basketball for the school, all of them do in fact Kylan had just been adopted in national team under 16 for basketball, but because he had an American passport, they could not allow him to ride. He's yeah. number five in Africa, rides on Team Uganda Motocross. You know, those kind of things that... But if you see those things, they have not just happened. Uh, I'm sure all of us, you, my friends here, know. I plan my life around their lives. Mm. You know, when is the next ride? Like, uh, weekend from... Yeah, from next weekend. I know he has a national competition. The other week, we're going to Nairobi for Na Kenyan National Championship. Then there's another race. So I have mapped out. I cannot do anything else because of their own programs, you know. But it's, of course, it's reaching a stage where now the firstborn can travel alone and do go and do things. They just come back from Germany, went to Germany alone. He was going to learn how to be an advanced mechanics in the motorcycles uh, for three weeks. Oh, wow. He did extremely very well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he also was training with his trainer. And then at the same time, he competed and was carrying a gun flag. He came number four in German national hey, championship anyway. in motocross. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was so good. But you were not there with him. I wasn't there with him. He, yeah. he planned everything. He was just sending me a message. Hi, Dad, I'm doing this tomorrow. And every day just deep, just the accountability. The accountability. Yeah. But there's a part 
of the taxi. And this is a very interesting <laughs> part. We went to Nairobi uh, about a month, just about two months, just one and a half months ago. Kenya has very wealthy people in motocross. You know, it's not like Uganda. In Kenya, you find children of the vice president of uh, Uhuru, Kenyatta, who all of them in top sports. Yeah. In Uganda, you don't see the, the children of the top, yeah. top guys. <laughs> so after, uh, after, the, after that, the guys were like, ah, leave Kailan for two weeks. So every day, someone was hosting the guy, you know. Ah. So on the last day, after two weeks, I said, yeah, you're coming back to Uganda. So my wife expected me to send a ticket. I said, no, carry the two, carry your two big bags. Went to the tax park, he got in a taxi from uh, Nairobi to Eldoret. Even Eldoret, we were not given him enough time. He said, Dad, along the way, he called me, sends me a message. He says, Dad, first of all, there's no seat belts. There are no seat belts in the car. <laughs> Number two, the driver overtakes from every side. Number three, the music is too loud. You know, I said, Son. Come home. Ca no, <laughs> as, <laughs> yeah, home. As, as your dad was worse, that uh, taxi driver also wants to arrive alive. So, yeah. <laughs> so you hang in there. So now he was asking, so Dad, where am I going to stay in Eldoret? Along the way, I just never gave him information. Along the way, he sends a message. He realizes one of the key pilots of Kenya Airways comes from Eldoret. So he sends the son a message and says, man, I am stranded. I'm alone. What am I doing in Eldoret? And this guy arranged the auntie to make sure he picks him, take him to his home. The next day he picked him. Yeah. From the next day, he, he got into a taxi to Malaba. And of course, if there was no public transport, he would have come to, to Kampala. With. But that experience just changed the yeah, guy. Yeah. My wife left our bedroom for three days. <laughs> I would beep in a panic state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing for our child? <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. But this is bullying, though. I know, right? Um, look, I, so I, 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 again, <laughs> No, so I, I, and I keep saying this, and, and she knows. Um, seeing especially what Joseph has done with his daughters, mm. I, I find that a lot of our generation, our peers, are spoiling their kids too much. Mm. So you find, you know, even the grandma is saying, ah, don't let the guy do that. I'm like, he is a boy, mm. right? Let him go and have a blast. If he falls down, it's all right. Mm. He's like, oh, don't climb there. I'm like, you're trying to literally castrate the guy. Mm. Yeah. So I encourage this guy to climb chairs, he, you know, all of the things. So we'll try and teach him some... some Allow <laughs> me to tell a story about <laughs> Ben Winnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us. It's a very short story. Uh. He probably won't remember this. Uh -oh. One day, I park at a supermarket near home. It's called City Joy. Mm. Bob, another step out of my vehicle, I see a man walking into the supermarket, either reading a message or doing something, and there's a boy, a little... Boy following him. him, and I say, Hello, I'm not looking at mm. mm. Kaja, Kaja. everybody has mm. to be orderly. Hello, how can you let that boy walk on his own? Mm. Who turns around? <laughs> the bearded <laughs> Ben Winnie. <laughs> so I say, it's, it's, it's even you doing this. He says, Yeah, he will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> See this guy. And he walked in, I greeted like a boy, the boy, he couldn't even talk properly yeah. that time. Yeah. He said, Something about two, two and a half. But it was time. clear yeah. that this man was saying, My friend. Be we'll organized, you will be fine. <laughs> it was, I it was, it was, that. I'll, I'll never forget that day. So, so that, what so is that's saying, the thing? Very true. And, and the thing is that I think that, like you have all said, at some point, whether it is in 10 years or 18 years, if he doesn't have that concept of I've got to try and be able to look out for myself, mm. and like Joseph did for, for Aki, yes, it's a controlled experiment. You have the guy at, at the corner of your eye mm. to make sure he doesn't run mm. into a road and get you know, yeah. hit by a car or yeah. something. But you're giving him that independence mm -hmm. to be able to know that, hey, I've got to be able to do certain things on, on my on own. My own. Yeah. Some very basic rules. Uh, my wife is one who has started this one. Finish your food, you must clean up after yourself. It's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Standard. Some, some very basic things. And if it, does, if it doesn't happen, you're like, eh, 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 eh boss. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, please. So mm -hmm. now he knows. I finish eating, I'm going to clean up after myself, take things to the dish, dishes to the kitchen, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it at a very early age, yeah. That becomes the, the format of how this guy yeah. thinks. And in eight, when he turns 18, 20, what you're talking about, the incompetence that you see in, uh, in our offices, in our organizations, is all coming from yeah. that yeah. parent not teaching that kid to do that. Yeah, yeah. Responsibility. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I really like where this conversation is going. I want us to talk a bit about, as we sort of break this first um, segment, 
what is your measure of readiness? So I guess when your child reaches 18, are you going to hope that you have done enough? Do you have a checklist? My child knows how to manage finances, they know how to keep accountability, they know how to do ABCD. How do you measure readiness for a child to be able to launch out on their own? Ha, ha, ha. There's no measure. Yeah. There's no measure. I, I, I'll tell you one of the things. Just following on the, on the verse from the Bible. Train them. Yeah. Show yeah. them the way. Yeah. Some of the things, they may not manifest them now, yeah. that they are ready, but they know when they get lost, they'll come back. Yeah. Just like the water. You can come and find the way, and here you backfill, you do everything you build. When the rain comes, the water will fill up here. Yeah. So it, it, just, just train, show them the way. Yeah. That's how you know they are ready. In fact, if em, you, Amos' story is perfect for yeah. it. Because by the time Amos, I mean, look, if you, if you never ever saw that boy as a child growing up, yeah. you would understand, you'd understand why, why Amy, Amos' wife, would be so worried. Yeah. Yeah. Those of us who've seen that boy growing up and how Amos has raised him, it's surprising to me that everyone would question him getting onto a taxi from there to here. It's like, that's what you'd expect. Yeah. I mean, we see the boy in the skies, on the bike. <laughs> yeah. Th that's enough. He's very ready. He's ready. If he can take that risk. Uh. Man, I, whenever I show those photos to my kids, they're like, oh, how did he come down? I'm like, he's ready. Anyone <laughs> <laughs> you know, who can flip a bike. I, th I, th I think um, more, more important than anything else for me, uh, and again, another thing I've, I've learned from, from Joe is you can only do what you can. Yeah. At the end of the day, this child is going to make their own decisions. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the only thing you can do for them, forget about the responsibility, forget about all of those things. It's about teaching them what is right, what is wrong. Yeah. Especially in regards to relationships with other people. Yeah. How do you deal with other people? How do you become selfless? How do you think about other people before yourself? How do you incorporate compassion into what you do? For me, I think that's the stuff that you want to put in. How do you make sure that your child is generous? Because when the time comes, that's the stuff that will be more important when they go out and, and, and get out of the nest. The mm -hmm. values. The, the, va right the, values. Va the, va the right values. No, I think just to make his point extremely, it's a, it's an extremely very nice point. You see, for us as parents, our responsibility is to create memories. Yeah. And when they grow, they choose which memories to apply. Yeah. And, and you see, the memories cannot be created by osmosis, you know, through osmosis. The memories, one of the things I've seen, that the biggest learning from my children is just hanging around with me. Yeah, I've yeah. been with the meetings, and as you've seen it, yeah. even yesterday you could see, he's just paying attention. But you'll be shocked how many discussion, how many, uh, how many questions and stuff he talked about yesterday on the road between your home. I went to see him for dinner, I mean, but, but he just, he was just telling me about his observation until home. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, because he was looking at the uncle, uh, Uncle Simon, and Uncle Simon was talking and was listening in and was saying yes. And Uncle I, I Simon is brilliant. When Uncle Simon talks, you you want to pay attention, right? And so? he's saying this. this Teenagers very nice. don't hear us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this point, Uncle Simon talked about is something I saw you five years ago. You said this, and you remember our discussion. This is what exactly what happened. Okay, so I now get what he's talking about. The reality is that there is there's no formula. Yeah. The truth is that it's like it's like trying pushing yourself to survival. If you sleep and do nothing, you'll gain nothing at the end of the day. That's a yeah. sure way. Mm. But if you wake up every morning and say, I am going to pursue yeah. certain dreams, I'm going to pursue certain dreams, chances of you being better are much higher. Yeah. Even with a child, the chances of you having a better child are much higher if you're involved as opposed to being, yeah. Uh, Amos has talked about that uh, interaction with the children, observation, yeah. values. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And, and there, are many, there are many ways in which you're hoping, what Joseph said, you're doing this, you're hoping it will, it will take yeah. when the time is right. Yeah. There's no way you're going to give them an exam. Are you ready to leave home? Uh -huh. Show me budgeting. No. But it, it manifests itself if you've interacted with them correctly, yeah. if you've spent all that time with those children, showing them the right side of you. And I, 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 I saw it in my life. And like I said, I'm trying to do for these kids what my parents did for me. I've, 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 you know, tried to spend as much time as possible with them. Actually, um, at a certain age, I said, you know what? I'm not going to bars and nightclubs anymore. I'm going to be at home every day, as long as I'm not traveling, so that I am with these children. When I'm 50, 
the youngest will be of an age where she's not interested in me anymore. When I'm 50, then probably I'll go out and start partying again. Enter COVID, but we still have, we still have time. But I was having something but, yesterday with your son. Yeah. Mm. So yesterday, my, his son comes out. They're all 16 with my son. Mm. You know how those guys meet. They're always like trying to show. Yeah, my son says I have eight pack, and I'm sure he also has eight pack. So he moves out, and he comes to say, say hello to us. He says hello. You can see the sports guy. He's like uh, macho. And I loved when he disagreed with his father, politely. Yeah. I was, it was crazy. He was, uh, he started explaining to his dad, the dad, you don't understand what you're talking about. What was it about? Was, it was yeah. some, some sporty something, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. the usual things, they always know more than you yeah. have this age. Yeah, he just explained to you, this is what exactly happened. No, it was actually about school. Oh, when, when, when? Uh, what, at what stage did you do IBM? IBM, and IGC, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, he said, dad, you just don't get this, but this is how it works, <laughs> you know. But in a very polite way, and that's how Simon is. And you can see he has copied it from Simon. Simon is such a nasty guy. Simon, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> if, I want, if I want a guy who just told me in, his, in my face, yeah. that Amos, you're stupid, you're silly on this. <laughs> and it doesn't mean bad, you know? No, no, it's no. Simon, I want to. <laughs> But that's not something we had with our parents growing up, being able to, to have that discourse. The, the oh, we, we did. I, you I, did? I, listen, my father, mm. he's, he's our pal. Mm. You know, when you ask him, what do you do? He says, um, I'm a grandfather to my grandchildren, father to my children, and husband to my wife. Yeah. He said, no, no, what do you do for a living? Said, that's what that's I what do for a living. <laughs> we grew up with that guy banging Kabozi with us, nice. hanging out with us in various ways. Of course, he'd give us Chiboko. He had this leather belt, which... I, I, I never forget it, but I didn't get the branches. Those are the kids. Were <laughs> naughty. Those guys got the belt. Mark must have gotten the most, of right? Of course. But he, he would he would talk to us all the time. Yeah. The, yes. Up to this point, there's no, there's nothing I'm not going to ask him about. Yeah. He speaks with our spouses, sometimes more than we do. Hmm. You know, because those are also his children. Yeah. He has a WhatsApp group with the grandchildren, and of course my mom oh, wow. as well. He's, he's, he's involved. Yeah. So we grew up talking to our parents. There's no way my kids are not going to talk to me. Yeah. Oh, except when they get into their teens. Teenagers are problematic. Yeah, they are problematic. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we'll Simon, back for another show. So Simon uh, my parents, um, my mom, yes. I, I mean, my mom was. I told her even I promised her when I will lose my virginity. I told, when I was yeah. 11. <laughs> that, that's my mom. But my dad, it was a different story. <laughs> Very different That's story. our producer of KFM. <laughs> <laughs> but something interestingly, what you're talking about, my kids, we disagree. They challenge me, more especially Aki. Uh, she, she, she can, oh, when she's passionate about something, she will take me down, yo. Uh -huh. <laughs> she doesn't fool around. But it comes from the point I told them, and I keep repeating it over and over again. In everything you guys do, you should be better than us times two. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I remind them, when they come and they say, but, uh, Papa, I was able to do this. And, yes, because you're supposed to be better than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, if, if I, I, I come anywhere as your measure, it should be 50%. Yeah. The other 50% is you. Yeah. Go on. Go further. That's, so, a, that's a good lesson to instill. So what I'm hearing you guys saying for, for this segment is deliberateness. So like, yes. like I think it was Amos who said, there's a difference between being a father and a okay what's provider. the what's the comp a provider and a father, father yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you, you don't just bring children into the world and then hope that somehow they will learn these things. okay a, let me use ugandan english uh -huh. there's a difference between being a father uh -huh. and a sperm donor that yes, yes. that's right there yes, yes. <laughs> there's a huge difference and I, what i hear you guys saying is that you're creating time to actually be there with your children. For Simon, you have decided, I'm not going to go to these places. Let me stay home so that my kids can see me, create memories and pass on these lessons. Please note, you will not pass them on when you're not there. No. It can't happen by osmosis, yeah? So as we wrap this up, I want us to come back and talk about um, what happens if your child is not ready to leave the, the nest. So yes, there's the kicking out um, scenario, but I, I do appreciate that we are raising children in a different era. And also, I want to hear from these gentlemen how they are partnering with the mothers of these children in preparing the kids. I guess, what's the role of the mom and how do you compliment her? We'll be right back. <laughs>